Kenyan sand boas versus hognose. Which of the two can make better pets? So some background information on each of the snakes. Kenyan sand boas are going to be from a lot of different African countries, including Kenya. Whereas uh, hug noses are from the western United States, and there are some eastern and southern, but uh, all hug noses are from the United States area. There might be some in Mexico, but all North America. Kenyan sand boas are usually going to range between about two and a half feet to three feet, with females getting about six inches longer than males on average. Uh, whereas hog noses, uh, male hog noses will get about a foot, maybe a little bit larger, but not much larger than a foot. Whereas females uh, have potential from re reaching and surpassing uh, three feet. Uh, both Kenyan sand boas and hog noses take uh, about 10 to 20 gallon size enclosures, depending mostly on whether you have a male or a female. The uh, male hog nose will do fine in a 10 gallon enclosure, while uh, females will need up to a 20 gallon. So when it comes to feeding, Kenyan sand boas are really pretty simple. A lot of times they will take frozen thawed mice, but some are known just to eat live. So although the occasional sand boa will be a bit pickier, it's generally not going to be too difficult to feed them. Uh, hog noses, on the other hand, uh, are very, very notorious for being picky, picky eaters. Mine is actually, I am blessed with a very, very uh, acceptable eater, but I mean, even she went on food strike for like three weeks because she didn't like the size of mouth she was getting. Uh, some hog noses are known to be even more extreme and not take anything but fish. Sometimes salmon is to be cut up in strips and fed to them. They are very, very notorious for being very picky animals. Kenyan sand boas are pretty easy to keep happy when it comes to temperatures and humidities. They need about a 90 to 95 hot spot, and the cool side can drop down to about 80 or 85, so it's not too difficult to get them the temperatures that they need, but they are generally pretty high compared to other snakes. Humidity, however, is best when it's pretty low. Usually around 20 to 40% is going to be just fine. You don't want it to get too high, but it's easier to maintain a lower humidity than a higher one. Hog noses are practically the same. The life expectancy of sand boas vary a lot depending on the source you're looking at. Some sites say 15 years, while others say they can easily exceed 30, but you can expect them to live a pretty long time regardless. Hog noses, on the other hand, uh, live 15 to 25 years according to what I've read. Kenyan sand boas have to be some of the most docile snakes you can get. Uh, they're really easy going, they're not too fast, they don't mind being out, and you really don't see them biting very often. But even if they do, it's not going to matter too much since they're so small and it's not something you have to worry about. Hog noses are known for having hissy fits where they'll basically puff themselves up, make themselves look big, and they'll just kind of want to give you a hard time. They will bluff strike, where it's just basically them just striking without even opening their mouth to scare you. Uh, they're known for going in spurts of this, but they're not ever really dangerous. And, um, you know, when they're in a hissy fit, you know, they just leave them, give them the rest of the day off and they're fine. But for the most part, they are good handlers. They just do have spurts where they do want to be an issue. So basically, uh, Kenyan sand boas and hog noses are very, very similar in all aspects of their husbandry and behavior. Um, so a big part of choosing whether you want a Kenyan sand boa or a Western hog nose is uh, how they look. Um, I personally really, really love the classic nose on the hog nose, but the Kenyan sand boas have the weird poppy eyes, which also look really cool. So, you know, it's very much preference. Um, I would argue that hog noses are maybe a little bit harder to care for just because of their pickiness and uh, their hissy fits. But other than that, there really isn't a huge difference between the Kenyan sand boa and the Western hog nose. So if one of the two snakes does seem more interesting to you, then I don't see a reason why you shouldn't go with it because the differences are so limited between the two. So I hope this gives you a little bit of insights onto some of the differences, although they may be very small, between the Kenyan sand boa and the Western hog nose. There really aren't a huge lot of differences. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy if you're planning on getting one of these animals because they're both great animals and I could easily recommend uh, each of them. Make sure to check me out, Amazing Animal Adventures. Um, thank you to Alex for letting me hijack his video, um, and we will see you next time. That was a really amazing animal adventure-ish. <laughs> it's outro.